Hi, I'm Kairos, and welcome to Power Ideas. For those of you who are new to the channel, I'm a technical services engineer. I help ensure that our corporate customers are provided and served with the appropriate energy to power their businesses. In my line of work, I meet a lot of people from all walks of life. Usually, we have problems regarding power and electricity. And what we at Meralco realize is that a lot of these problems could have been avoided if people knew more about how power and electricity work here in the Philippines. So that's why we came up with Power Ideas. And today, we're going to talk about the power supply chain. The power supply chain looks like this and has four main stakeholders. The generation, transmission, distribution, and the end users. So how does the power supply chain work? And how does it affect power quality? First, the generation companies have to produce power. Then, the generated power flows through the transmission grid towers and sends it to distribution utilities like Meralco, who then delivers it to the end users. If there's a problem at any point in that chain, then you get power quality problems. There could be a shutdown in the power plant, a down transmission line, or there could be a problem with the end user's electrical system. Issues from any stakeholders can affect the power quality in the entire system. And that's when you get poor or bad power quality. With good power quality, everything just works. When you have bad power quality, equipment doesn't run, or worse, it can end up damaging your equipment. Of course, power quality problem can also happen in the distribution side. In the Philippines, power is mainly distributed through overhead distribution lines, which can be affected by things like thunderstorms, broken transmission line cables, landslides, floods in substations, broken poles, lightning strikes, and animals like snakes, birds, and squirrels. Yes, we now have squirrels in the Philippines. As for problems on the end user's part, well, let me show you how that can happen. Here's an example. I remember that time a customer called us because they believed their equipment was malfunctioning because of a voltage imbalance, which is a power quality issue. Upon arrival at the site, we checked the voltage and found no imbalance. The voltage was as it should be, and when we checked the customer's equipment, that's when we discovered the problem. Their equipment was not configured to the parameter set by the Philippine Distribution Code. These parameters can also be found in our technical guide to power quality. Just click the link in the description below to find out how to get a copy. Well, that's it for now. I hope you learned some things about power quality and the power supply chain. Thank you for watching. We'll have more useful information to share in our next episode. So, we'll see you here on Power Ideas. subscribe and click the bell icon so you are notified when we upload new videos.